I'm going to modify this unit to have a lithium ion battery pack and charging unit built in and also it converts it using a switch mode power supply to run from 240 volts instead of 110 volts. So if you want to see how I do that and learn how to add battery packs and charging systems to units, I suggest you watch the video and uh, take note. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so right here is a SA3050A real-time speech analyzer by Audio Control. I figured as previously I've done a repair video on it and also used it in my 3D printer um, before and after tests when I put on stepper motor dampers. Now this doesn't have a battery pack in it. They can come with a battery pack and I think this one has had one in at some point. So I'm going to put a battery pack in this and I'll make a, des a design for that. Now I've also looked at that previously when I was looking at repair and Here's my notes on the internal connections just here. So these are the windings for the original transformer. So it's got dual windings, center tap, each end go together through diodes. So it gives a much smoother output rather than being a half sine, gives a full sine wave for each side. So it gives an overall smoother waveform. Anyway, that's just the way I do it. So it's actually got two, dual voltage, right? So it's 16 volt AC and 11 IC. And I was actually measuring on a header on, inside the unit, 18 volts and 12 volts DC, okay? That's what's powering the unit. So those are the two voltages I actually need. Now I actually did some testing on this at the time. And 11.4 volts is when that rail dropped to a level where it wouldn't work anymore. And this rail here went down to 7.6 volts before it started to fail. So those are the lowest voltages I can have before it drops off. Now obviously I don't want to go that low. I want to sort of keep it within a certain threshold so it keeps on working. I, I tested these individually using my power supply by adjusting voltages at the time. Now what I've decided to do, this is the project I've got here. So I've got this lithium battery pack here for 18650s. Obviously I have a bunch of 18650 batteries as well to go in, I've got them on the bench. Now the idea here is I use a 4 cell battery charge controller. So it's got protection circuitry, so it allows for charging and discharging. So it stops over discharge and stops overcharging. But only turns off the whole bank together. So if it starts over discharging by one on one cell the whole lot shuts off. Or if um, it's overcharging, like one cell is fully charged to like 4.3 volts or whatever it is, um, the whole bank shuts off. So even if the other one's only seeing a 4 volts, it will stop. Okay, so that's the way it works. So it's not perfect, but it's going to be fine. The instructions for this thing, or what limited instructions there are online from Banggood on the, on the page for this item, they actually state it's best to have a matched set of batteries, so that the batteries are as closely matched as possible. And that would be why. So you make sure that they charge at about the same rate and the same capacity and that sort of station. You know, one battery cuts off for the rest of them from charging when they're still going. So that would be a reason for that. Anyway, so that's going to be connected up to this. So I'm going to basically going to loop the, back, the black wire from one cell to the positive of the next one. Like that. So in order to make them a serious chain. But also having a tapping off point to go to which cell detection point on that board. That's the reason for that. Now I've also got here in these two bags, or two different versions here. It's supposed to be a buck converter, so it's supposed to step it down. This, I think it is. I think that's what's in here. It could be a boost. I, it doesn't say. It's not, nothing on the pack to say whether it's a boost or a buck converter. So you're able to find out. I said you hook up this to power onto those two points there and see what the output is and see what happens when I adjust it. That'll tell me it's a boost or a buck straight away. I think this is rated at two amps, which I think will be enough. I remember rightly, it's only doing about 1.2 amps or something like that in that region, I'm pretty sure that's what it's doing. And this is another version. Again, I'm not completely sure if it's a booster or a buck. Um, the bag says it's a 24 to 12 volt adjustable supply. Again, it could be a booster or a buck though. It could go either way. Now it looks surprisingly similar to this board really in some ways. It might be the same chip, this this time it's got a heatsink on it. And a bigger inductor, so and bigger caps. These are rated 50 volt caps. These are rated at 35 volt. I prefer to use this one, I think, but I'll try them both out. I've got my power supply already turned on. So I'm going to hook this up and we'll see what voltages we get out of these and see what happens. Let's get my multimeter here. So I'll just hook up to the outputs and we'll see what comes out of it without doing anything. Like power on. What do we get? It was 16.5 going in, I'm getting 15.8 coming out. So it's probably turned fully up. Let's get a screwdriver and see if I'm going to adjust this thing. 
nothing that way let's go yellow way here we go it's starting to drop so yeah that's definitely a buck converter that's great so I've got 16.5 volts going in so 15.8 is as much as like 0.7 volt drop across the device so it's 1.2 so 1.2 volts is the last that will go let's wind it back up so I want about 12 volts out of this not talk about fire close enough so now let's check the other one we'll see how that one goes um, I'm not sure if that's got enough current came capacity it probably has but I don't remember the actual loadings that were present at the time so all right so those connected up we'll do exactly the same thing again that's 16.5 so it's basically the input voltage coming straight through we got something drops. That's also a, a buck converter. But obviously, it's top threshold is better for some reason. It's actually go right to the top. So it goes down to. I don't want to use this one yet. So 1.2 volts as well. So I'm going to set it to 12. Yeah, 12.1. Close enough. Okay. So I've got a choice of two units I can use. Yeah, they certainly are very similar to each other. So it might be the same chip, but I don't know how well this heating is actually attached because it does move around a little bit. Don't even see that on camera, probably not. But it's got some flex in that, so it's just like a double sided adhesive stick on the back of that. So, yeah, oh, that's probably right. I'm guessing it's rated for a high current. It might be, I think these small ones are rated at two amps, I think two and a half amps, something like that. I think that's what they're rated for. So this one might be maybe a five amp one. Um, Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I'm guessing here. So I think I'm going to go for the smaller one. I believe it can handle it. If it can't, I'll change it. Won't be that big a deal. Alright, so now let's tell you what my plan is in a bit more detail. So now we have a back converter. I'm going to show you my diagram. Actually, I'll get you that. Very rough diagram. Sorry about that, but that is what it is. So we have AC input here, so it's an AC DC converter, so basically AC, AC power supply here. So 240 volt in, which is using this module here. Alright, so this is a uh, 100 240 volt AC, output is 18 volts, 2.7 amps. Alright, so that should be perfectly adequate for what I need. I featured this in a mailbag recently. Alright, so that's that power supply there. Now I'm assuming 17 volts DC output is what I think I really need is a charging voltage. Now these are adjustable, there's an adjustment on them. Now the other thing I've got to do, because I'm going to be using battery packs basically to the output of that power supply, I need to put a diode in there. So let's just um, note that on there. I need to put a diode right there so that the there's no current backflow from the batteries going back into the power supply. Okay, power supply can come through, that's fine, that's exactly what I want, but I don't want the cells discharging into the power supply because is um, when it's turned off, it's that circuit will still be active. Okay, even you've got it switched off here. So the um, you have to make sure there's no current going through into here because there's a there's a drain resistor on the capacitors inside the power supply. So if you turn the power off, it will drain the capacitors on the output. So if the power supply is turned off and you only have batteries and it's back flowing, the resistor in here will gradually discharge the batteries and I don't want that because this is going to be sitting for months at a time, probably unused. All right, so by the time we go to use it again, it'll be flat. Bad news. So we'll stick a diode in there that solves that problem and that's that issue gone. Now this is the cell protection circuitry which I've drawn out really roughly, as you can see. So we have, that is that PCB, this one here. Okay, so that's that board there, and these are all the batteries which are this pack. Okay, so this is the becomes the main power supply. All right now, one thing you think, well, you've got a cheap switch mode like this that could be a bit noisy on the output. It's entirely possible. Um, it doesn't have a lot of bulk capacitors on the output there. It's the smoothing is not a lot there. It does have a capacitor, an inductor, and another capacitor in order to produce a smoothing circuit, which is quite a nice feature, I suppose. It will help it smooth out. But when you've got the batteries block across it, that will actually act a little bit as a smoothing circuitry as well, because it's going to be dumping that noise into the batteries, and that should help smooth it out. It should. 
but I might have to add some extra capacitance or something like in there to help smooth out the actual rails. I don't want any noise coming through here, so we'll see how it goes. If it's too noisy, then I'll, I'll put some kind of filtering on. Maybe even ferrites as well. There's something to try and help any noise that may come through. All right, so then you've got a power switch, which is built into the unit. It's the front panel switch, which I have to rewire, which should be very easy to do. It's designed that way already. I just have to change the jumper block around. So that will then become a, a 17 volts DC switch instead of a 240 volt switch. So then you've got the main supply rail here. So that's a 17 to 12 volt rail, which means, well, I've got 17 to 12 volt, meaning 17 will be its nominal voltage, because that's what I'm setting for the cell protection. All right, so I'm going to base it on 17 volts, which should be about the high voltage for full charge on those batteries. And 12 volts, as I say, that's a cutout threshold. So when the batteries are draining down, 12 volts should be about the threshold for those batteries being flat, or when this thing cuts out, around that kind of level. It might be slightly lower, actually. And then over here, tapping off that same line, I've got a DC DC converter, which is what I was just testing just now, it's this thing. Okay, so the idea is that this DC DC converter runs with this main 17 volt rail, and then produces a 12 volt rail, which means this will produce 12 volts right down to the time this one cuts out. Now I was actually debating using a parallel system, so I'd actually, I was really close to actually designing it. So I'd have two power supplies, two sets of protection circuitries, two sets of batteries, and completely isolated supplies. Okay, one for 12 volt, or well, one for 12 volt, one for 17 volt. All right? I was very much likely to do that. But then I was thinking, well, these these are not separate supplies anyway. Right? They're not isolated from each other. The, the negatives, or well, the zero volt rail, is tied together on them anyway. So they don't need to be isolated supplies. So I thought, well, how can I simplify what I'm doing? I don't need two power supplies. The power supply I'm going to put in is current, can handle the current. So I don't need two power supplies. I just need to have one which can produce the highest voltage and then step it down. So I've decided to do it this way. So all I actually have to do is add a DC DC converter instead of having two power supplies, two cell protection circuitries, two sets of batteries. Because I was going to do a triple, a triple pack, a three cell um, protection circuit, which would have given me about the 12 volt region. And would have dropped out around the 9 volt region, which is kind of where I wanted it to be. Right, 8, 9 volts, as per my, my notes just here. Okay, I think I can do it using this method. Now the only thing is, I don't know how long it's going to last using a pack of four 18650s. I don't know how it's going to go. If it doesn't last long enough, I may have to upgrade this pack here to be a different kind of battery. What other lithium batteries are there? I don't know. I actually haven't seen. I mean, 18650 is the most common, but I know you can get larger capacity ones. So that may be an option, changing the battery pack and, and the cells to be something else and still using the same protection circuitry, because this can handle it. I think this is rated at 5 amps or 4 amps or something like that. So this can handle the current just fine, that's not an issue. The other option is to actually, if I find this isn't powerful enough, or rather it doesn't have enough usage time, is double up this circuitry. Because I've got some of these boards and I've got some of these packs. Right? I've got more than one of each. So I could always have two banks of protection circuitry, oh, we all can focus again, two banks of protection circuitry and battery packs. So I, I basically I duplicate this circuit, I double two of those in parallel. That might be fine. I mean, it also means you've got the option then of running on four batteries or eight, you could use either way and still be absolutely fine without having to worry about it. That would double the usage time. The only thing then you've got to consider is the fact that you've got two packs in parallel, which means you're going to be trying to balance each other out because this this circuit is a charge and discharge circuit. So we're now charging and discharging of the batteries from the same two connections, which are over here. If you put two banks in parallel, you may end up with one bank trying to charge the second bank if there is a bit of imbalance. I don't know how much of an issue that's really going to be. It, it's probably going to be fine, but... I'll see how it goes with a single bank, a single pack first. I don't expect to use it a lot. So I think probably just around the battery pack here would probably be sufficient. I mean, I, I estimate I get about an hour and a half out of it. I, I obviously I want no touch to go to build it and see how it goes. And I'm not completely sure I remember the current draw on it. And it does vary depending on how many LEDs are on the front panel. Even I've got an hour out of it, it'll probably be plenty. We'll see how we go. Okay, so I've been trying to figure out the best way of um, handling these interconnects. And I was kind of tempted to run around the back of the ball like this. So that's going to be most positive and that's going to be most negative. So therefore this one here would go to this terminal here. 
I was tending to sort of try and wrap it around and get it through the hole there, but it's got like a little stud through there, which means I can't actually just run the wire through. Not easy. I did actually take one of these wires off just now and have a look, but it's hard to even get one wire through, let alone two. So I'm thinking, right, what I'm going to do then, instead of doing that, I'm going to run it over the top like this. Okay, so that will go to there. And let's run it out to that, like so. And it's got plenty of slack there. I can always tidy it up and maybe tuck it down in between the batteries and like because it's going to be a, a fixed pack it won't be taken out or anything it's just stay in the machine that's it so I reckon that'll probably be fine actually so I'm just tack that one to there do the same with this one here tack it onto there like that and then the same for this one here like that as well and then this will be the Negative, this is a bit of positive. And obviously I've got the sense lines for each battery for this module. So the most negative, I think that way around. So the most positive goes to the end. So it's still kind of in line, but this one here, this wire is going to be a bit short. So I might have to, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I might try and mount that on the end or something like that maybe. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. This needs to be mounted somehow. Maybe I should use some thermal adhesive or something like that to stick it to the casing of the, of the unit, like right next to the battery pack, so that it uses the casing to help dissipate heat. Because this will potentially get warm. So, I don't know, we'll figure out what we'll do with that. But just tack those on there, I think. I think that'll be easy enough. So, I'm going to put some leaded solder on. Done on this un unleaded rubbish. I hate unleaded solder. It's awful stuff. Environmentally speaking, leaded solder is awful stuff, but you know, it's. Um, I look at a practicals perspective that's actually looking a bit cold, I think it's got a lot of lead it's over in that one anyway so that's the plan there, there you go. and I'll just tie this wiring up later on I may need to shorten it, we'll see how we go but I think it's probably going to be fine, I'm not too worried about it being a bit of wire laying around, I'll just I probably need to put like a cable tie or something around the pack anyway to hold all the batteries in so it gets a jolt the batteries don't fall out. Um, so I need to think about those kind of aspects. Now the negative wire here is a bit short but I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to hook it straight up and just, just do that. So let's just do this. I might have to change this tip, it's a bit, it's a bit big. Anyway, let's just uh, get the board prepared. So, sold the negative on. Now I can use all of these as sense lines. I mean, I'm kind to stick it on here. You know, it's kind of a nice tidy pack like that, but I don't know how hot this is going to be, whether it needs extra cooling or not. I do like things being compact and tidy and, you know, as a package. Okay, I'm going to change this around. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to change it. Let's go in the other way. I'm going to attach it up to the outside of the box. If it gets warm, I'll move it. Otherwise, there's no need. So if I do that, then I can literally just cut... Well, I'll probably just cut a bit of that wire off, actually. And just, if I just cut that off there, and pull the sheathing off, I can go straight to that pad with that wire. And that will be okay. Just making sure I'm not making some kind of stupid mistake. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just attach it right there. So let's shut it off. Done. Right, so that will, that will kind of hold it. Uh, I can probably do a similar thing with this one, but... Okay, done. 
and then they've got the positive wire which so just has to go to there so I think that's nice and compact isn't it that way I'm just fussy like that so let's do this one trim this off A bit better, so you've got a nice little charge control in. Now we'll do this hook onto the upper here. What I'll do is I'll test all this outside of the main unit there. I'll do some bench testing first, just to verify it doesn't you know blow up or something, and then I'll hook it into there. So so far so good. It's pretty simple though, isn't it? And we'll hook into this. Because also need to hook into the power supplies from the main unit, which is going to be this thing. And with the diode as well, I'm likely to forget that. So I probably have to that. I know I'm going to forget it. I can, I can just tell. So the positives can go together from these. Now I think I probably need to look at how I'm going to lay this out in this casing. I might have to think about how I'm going to lay it in this unit actually. So I'm going to stop this and I'll pull the unit apart and have a look. Okay, so I've taken the screws out. Let's put the cover off. You see, I've got my noting there about 120 volts. <laughs> Don't get caught out by that. Okay, so there's the inside. Or if I can mount it maybe on the back panel somewhere because I've got this transformer here I've got to take out as well. So I need to sort of figure out how this is going to fit as well. Um, it does have some threaded holes in this chassis here. These are threaded holes, I think they're three mil or something like that. And there's also a couple in there, but there's actually one that's behind there, in that sticker just there too. Right there. There's another threaded hole. Right, so I need to sort of consider how this is going to go in. So the transformer's got to come out, and I kind of need to get this in there, maybe end on, I might have to... Once I've got this transformer, I'll have to see how I can fit this in there. So I might have to just have a think about this and figure out how I'm going to put this in, in the best orientation. I mean, the wiring I've got hooked up to here is, also these are the AC input for the mains. One goes straight to that socket. So these, are the, these two terminals here are the AC, that's the ground, and those are the DC. So I want to have them kind of tucked out the way as well. I don't like to have AC wires floating around too much. The ground is going straight to the chassis. I'm going to just tap off that lug there. I'll show you that again. Nice, there's a lug there for the AC. I could always stick another ring uh, ring terminal on there with another nut, or even just take the nut off and put two ring terminals on it, and then run that up to the power supply to earth that properly. And neutral is going down to the board here. This is going to be basically, so this is powered up if it's plugged in. So I'm not going to be using any AC switching, which is counting in here. How this works is this jumper block just down here, which you can probably barely see. All right, so just there's the jumper block. That actually, that can plug in either way around. You take it out and turn it around and plug it back in again. Now those two wires there go to the front panel switch. And those two wires there are looped. Now those actually go to nothing right now. Those two pins don't go anywhere. They go to these two pins on the header, just there, those black ones, which I've put in. And what those do, it's just a switching option. So if I could take this jumper block out, turn it around, plug it back in again, that then that loop then becomes the connection, you know, replaces the switch, so it's always on. And that energizes the neutral here to the neutral to the transformer, which is one of these other red wires. That one there, all right? So it links those together. So they run through that loop there. So the power will always be on going to this, which is, I think that's what I was saying. Okay, so then the switch will then become on the other side. We'll go through the other side instead, which again goes to those two pins. So basically a switch will be connected to those two pins, linking those together. So then you can use that as a switching system, which is what I want, because I need to basically put a header on there and tap off all the connections I need onto that connector there. Um, I don't wish around it, so I'll have to do some testing to figure out that actually before I pull things apart. But you can probably see in there, there's a JP2 and a JP3, which have got like solder blobs on them. You know, point to them. All right, there and there. They are linking across pins on there. All right, so in my notes here, I've shown this link there and there. All right, that's those two solder bridges, all those links on the board. 
Discount is linked to discount those connections. So this is power supply in, power supply out, power supply in, power supply out. All right, both of those rails. So what I've got to do um, is actually investigate whether or not I can even have to take those links out. I might be able to leave them in and just tap into it. Because that will also then make use of these big reservoir caps which are already on the board. In theory, I need to pull it apart and again and actually analyse that part of the circuitry in a bit more detail. I'm not sure how they've actually configured it. There's different versions of this. Now Kim, um, one of my subscribers who um, interacts a lot in the live chat and I do live streams, he has one of these units, but different variant. There's different versions of the boards as you expect over time. So Kim has reverse engineered some of the circuitry in here. The version that was sent to me by Kim is, is slightly different. But I can understand the principles of why they're doing it. So I covered some of this. I also covered the charging board and the battery pack side of it, which I'm basically completely ignoring what they've done. It gave me an idea of how they've configured it and what they're doing there, which gave me some insight. And it's there are similarities between this board and Kim's one. So it was definitely helpful. But unfortunately, it's not exactly the same revision, so I couldn't use it, you know, side by side. So I was gonna. What I was actually gonna do is, is basically make my own version of the battery pack system and. And it's interconnected in, but um, you know, so I well, I don't need to do it that way. You know, I can do it in my own way, a different way, which is far simpler. Because what audio control actually done is, in a way, over engineered it. It was pretty complicated what they'd done on the actual charging circuitry side because it's got a boost converter, anything on it. It's boosts up and and all sorts of things like that on that charge board. It's like, well, it's not necessary if you start with a high enough voltage in the first place. And then drop that down. There's things like that going on because I've got the battery packs, which is a, it's an 8 volt battery pack I think they use, and then they boost the 8 volts up to get the voltage they need in the output. It's like, no, just use a higher voltage battery pack. So that's what I'm doing. Well, so I need to test those points here and just refresh memory which, which way around these go because I've got say two extra pins I've added on. I don't know which way around they are. So I'm going to plug this in, turn very down, I forget, and um, test those points down there and figure out. Which one's which again? Because I've forgotten. Turn that on. Uh, turn that on. It puts AC power through. Yep, it's powering up. So let's just do some ticks. Checks. All right, where are we? 16. 11. Okay, so that's at 113 volts. If we go to slightly more, there you go, it's 120 volts here. That should be closer, I think. Yeah, 12 volts there and 18 volts there okay so there is a bit of flexibility there in that voltage range um, and then you should, I think that's uh, that pin there is negative I think that's a common negative and OC pins currently aren't used so that's what I need to actually look at doing is hooking up into those turn the power back off again for zap myself yep yeah, so 16 was on that end mustn't forget I'll make a note of that now well, 18 volts is the end. Okay, so let's make a note of those connections. So um, it was on. I've got this is up, upside down. I was actually when I was working on this before I did the other around. So it's at this end of the plug, isn't it? So those two there are the switch. All right, so that switch. Now I know which way around it goes. All right, simple as. I did get that right, didn't I? Kind of important. Um, yes, yes, that's okay. 12 volt, yep, 12 volt was in. That's right. All good. So that's my notes completed for that. So, really, what I'm at a point now, I can sort of look at. I think I need to get this mounted in there first. This is the hardest thing to mount. I'm not so worried about the battery packs being other side because that's low voltage, so you can use plugs and or just have some training wires. I don't mind that, but I don't want to do the same thing with AC. So um, I'll get the transformer out and we'll get this mounted in there, then we'll go from there. Okay, so I thought I just I started pulling things off and I was thinking, oh, I'll just think about this a little bit more. And this is the connector here, which all these wires and the transformer go to, right? So we've got White, blue, blue, orange, orange, black, which are the windings. And then you've got AC neutral in and out, right? So one goes to the connector here, which is the black wire, which is the very bottom connection. And then the other one there is a red wire, which goes to the transformer to provide the neutral to the transformer. 
okay? Because the transform was straight across on the live, all right? So switching the neutral. I think it was what I was doing anyway. You're switching, no, but I've been phase. No, no, it doesn't matter. So um, I should again today actually figure that out. So that connector block, I can actually just unplug that, not use it at all. I've got a few options here how I can do this now. If I unplug that block and just take it with the transformer out of the unit and put it to one side, then I know what it's from and I can maybe reference it later on or something. Who knows, it could be handy for something. Or I could pull the wires at the block and use those as a hookup point. What I've got to do though, my drawing, I'll show you again. I need to have a switch in there. So I need to do all this connection here, always on, and that switch. So, and then the supplies after that. Now, what I was thinking about as well is these voltages that I'm measuring on these pins vary with input voltage, which means they're not regulated. The regulators must be after that point, but they are smoothed. So I think I can probably leave those links intact and just tap onto those headers, and it will make use of these capacitors because it will be basically back feeding to the, uh, you see you've got the bridge rectifiers just down there, All right? got sets of those. Okay, so those are, well, there's four there. So I'm pretty sure I can just tap onto this header and that would be fine, which means I don't need to worry about any of this other circuitry. So I'm kind of just need to stop and think about what I'm doing for a minute and just um, decide on which option is going to be the best one because I've got, I'm leaning towards connecting up to here rotating that block there around so it's using those two pins for the switch and run the power into one pin out to the other pin and then interconnect into those and then I don't have to touch anything else so I could just take that big block there out with the transformer and that's gone yeah so that's kind of where I'm leaning to right now let's put it on under excuse the noise it's getting too hot I had to turn the air conditioning on um, so here's the block there and this is just the panel folded down so it's putting a wire over there which I think I'm, if I do take this block I'm going to pull this wire out anyway but I want to take this block out okay that allows me, basically allows me to take this out so if I pull this wire here out of the block I can use this to go straight to the, the uh, power supply over here and there's a block with that transformer assembly I'll, I'll take that out now so what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to turn this around now I was going to maybe forget I don't know. I'll turn it around that way. Okay, so that has uh, then meant this, this switch on the front panel here is now going to be switching on those two black pins there. That's what it switches instead now. That link there doesn't matter because now there's nothing on there anyway. All that does is actually link these two pins together. That's the pins that was originally switching. Right, so I've still got options. There's a fuse here, which I think will no longer be in circuit. I need to look at that. I think that was in circuit with that, with those one of those pins on there, I'm pretty sure. So if I'm not using those pins, it's no longer fused through here. But there is a fuse in the power supply. Okay, so I've got my meter out. Let's have a look and see where this fuse goes. I'm pretty sure it goes to the AC side. Yeah, it does. Here we go. All right, so that's those, because they're linked together with this plug right now. All right. So that is all that fuse was doing before was, was fusing the transformer itself, not the DC side at all. So there's a fuse inside here. So I'm going to rely on the fuses inside the, the AC uh, switch mode supply. I won't worry about this because it's not going to be used anymore. So I think that's okay. I'm not worried about that now. All right, let's get this transformer. I've already taken one screw out. It's the other side. There we go, it's a transformer out. So I might be able to use this something else one day, it might be good for another project. Um, who knows? Now that's it, I can actually look a bit better at um, how this is going to fit. If I remove the print button, I'm not likely to ever use it. I wonder if I can just move it up, because what it's got here, showing the chassis, there you go. So there's a button there for printing. I could maybe take it off and put it above it. Move it up there instead of under here. There's plenty of cable length there to do that. I think that's a better option actually. If I move that print button and move it up here to above that the the, the, uh, the text instead of below it, that will allow for that to be fitted there. And everything's still right there for me to work on. I've actually got that bolt hole there I can now use. 
that line up, uh, it's a little bit high. It's not quite in the right place, it's tipped over. Unless I elongate that hole, you know, then I just want this hole I have to drill in the chassis. And I could just move the move that tag there, so you've got this chart I'm talking about. There's a hole right there, which the transformer was on before. So if I elongate the hole on the power supply, I might be able to use the same hole and then just move that onto there and clamp it down. One less hole to drill. All right. That's looking promising actually, I like that. All that leaves is that empty hole and moving that. And I have to make a hole over this end obviously to bolt that down. But no, I think that's a goer actually. That wouldn't be hard to do. Okay, that's the plan. I shall come back once I've got it mounted. Okay, so I've taken the strap off for the earth and that um, switch as well. Here's my little 7mm nut driver. You probably haven't seen me using that before, but I thought I'd mention it. Um, I've done this in a mailbag before. I might chuck a link down below if you're interested in buying one of these things. A set of these little nut drivers. I've got a couple of sets. Yeah, if you can get them on Banggood. Make sure you use my link below if you go to Banggood and have a look. Anyway, so there's the hole, which I want to try and get onto. That hole right there, so that's the hole I want to go to is the chassis there. See that don't quite line up. If I line it up like that, see it's actually slightly offset. Probably can't see very well there because of the lighting, but you see it's actually a bit wonky if I get it straight. Right, that's how it's sitting. So if I elongate the hole in this piece here, in the aluminium, not by much, I only basically put another hole right next to it, and that will then line up perfectly, okay? Now if you look at the other end, that misses that connector. And that sits right up against it, so that is, fits really nicely. All that, so that's good. And there's plenty of space up here for me to put this press button, right? So I could easily put that above it again, back above here. So it's still by the original text, just in a different position. All I've got to do then is mount, make another hole for this. I can actually dismantle the cage of this put it in there, assemble it all and put the cage back on because I can get to both the screws. Get it lined up, take the cage off, mark it on the ball, on the chassis here for where to drill through. I'll probably have to do something like that actually. So, Right, my aircon's struggling to keep up, it's starting to rattle. Okay, so as you can see I've got the power supply half mounted, right? So I've elongated the hole a little bit, basically I've got a Another, it's actually a three and a half mil hole, so that's what I use three and a half mil drill. But I basically drilled it right next to the other hole, and then just let it slip between the two to make a slot. So it's just gentle enough. So it's actually got enough clearance here now to actually just be off that connector as well. All right, so that's all fine. And you can see I've got the earth going to that bolt there. Basically, just moved it. Now this, I actually pulled this unit apart and checked the earth connection on that tab. That actually goes through to the chassis anyway. And it's just um, the earth goes through the chassis and it's got a capacitor coupling to the neutral and to the negative DC capacitive coupling between the two right so it's not actually a super critical connection because it's going to be getting from the chassis anyway so it's basically the same connection between there and, and that the actual bottle connection there so I don't actually really need to use it so I'm just going to just do this and this should be adequate I don't actually have to put a connection onto it so that's fine one less thing I have to do and drill through this existing hole that's on the chassis. I'll take this frame off there. If I drill through that and then just bolt through. Yes it's non-standard and it'd be a pain if I have to, have to change it but it probably isn't going to matter. All right? It means I'm not drilling an extra hole in the chassis and it will just be a little bit tidier. It will look like an original screw that's there so it won't matter. No loss. Because there's only a couple of screws anyway get it off. It's not exactly hard. So let's take that off. There's another one up here. It slides off backwards and then it's out of the way. Okay so what I've really got to do then, cool, so I'm going to do that, I'm going to drill a hole through there instead. I'm going to tighten that up so it's in the right place. Drill through the chassis into the heat sink on here, all right, you can see the hole is, and then bolt it on rather than drilling another hole through the metal. I think I prefer to do that. I've got my 
Danger Mouse mug. Turned up the air conditioning because it started rattling. It's getting too hot for it. Had the results opening window. Awful. So let's tighten this up so it holds itself in place. As straight as I can. I like things to be straight. Oh, that's slipped, doesn't it? Of course it's slipped. Okay. Get it straight. I know it's lined up. Let's whack a hole through it and go from there. Done. Get a piece of swarf when flying over here. Don't want that. I need to kind of get a swarf off there as well. A knife usually works quite well. It's only aluminium, so it comes off pretty easy. Not the easiest thing to get into though, because I'm quite flat on it. But right. that'll do. Now let's use one of the original screws, so it all matches, just like that. These are got uh, star washers built into the nuts, which is really nice. So I think that gives a better look. Okay, there you go. That looks almost normal. If I can get it lined up right, let's lift it very, very slightly. And it will center on that hole, and you won't even know there's a hole there. Like that. Okay, obviously, this is all the power supply part. I thought I'd build the battery pack side of it yet and figure out what I'm going to do with that. That's not straight, is it? I've got that wonky. Nah. No one's ever going to see it anyway. Anyway, so I need to drill a hole still for this switch. Alright, so you can see I've got that position there I've got to go into. So I need to make sure I can actually get it there. These are nice and tight. Also, going to put some of this stuff here on just to make sure that they don't rattle loose or anything like that. Really don't want that happening. This means I want to unthread. If something happens. Not likely to be an issue, but you never quite know, do you? There we go. That's now in place. I think that one's on. Yep. Uh, that's my screws. Then I'll put the switch back in. Switch. Is that not dry though? Spinning slightly, but I think that's all right. Here we go. Let's lift up now. So that's that part done. Okay, so let's see that plugs back into there when I put it back on. All right, so it's all going to reach just fine, no problems at all. So what I really need to do now is actually like link these up to the power supply. Neutral and phase going to those. Actually, black. That's, that's black. I thought it was back to front. I was thinking it wasn't right. This black wire is actually. The phase, right, it's also your American wire and colour scheme. I thought it was weird, it's switching the, the neutral and um, having a fuse on neutral. I thought it was weird. Nah, because of the colour scheme. That is live. I was looking at now, I'm looking at the plug, I'm thinking actually, no, that's live pin over there. Tug, no movement, that's all good. So I need to do the same on the other one there as well. Don't like that wire colour skin, it's like uh, really should be blue and uh, blue and brown for my country, that's what I should be using. Um, I've got these other red. Oh, if I use black and red, is that gonna be confusing? Because then it's gonna be like the other way around. I think that's potential to be bad. I think I need to look at my wire colours. I'm not happy with that. 
Okay, well, I've decided to do, I've got some other black wire here, which is very much like the original one. Maybe if, it, maybe if anything slightly thicker. And um, if I make them both blank, at least then I know they're not polarized, and I can make sure that if I ever work on it, I can verify which one's which um, instead of having it potentially misinterpreted. I just need to get my solder in. So I've already got soldered, uh, folded over, solder it on. Get that one on there nice, and I'll, I'll stick some heat shrink on it after. And I just want to make that just long enough to go down there as well, just like the other one. I might say probably that long. Alright, got the heat shrink cut, let's slide it on. Done. Okay. Shove this wire in there. What I'll probably do is cable tie them all together as well to make sure it's all bundled up nicely and managed nicely. Nice and tight, nice and tight, and they're pulling out. Alright, so I'll probably stick a cable tie on those and keep the 12 volt ones, or well, the 18 volt ones, away from them. Take the cable tie, got some in somewhere. Now we just keep all the uh, mains cabling, obviously, mains, and we keep it hopefully alright. Alright, so that should be good. I'm happy with that. So what we're really talking about now is the uh, DC side of things. And this is the bit which is, I thought was going to be the quickest thing to do and it's taken me forever. So, yeah. Now I need to start looking at the battery pack and I'm going to locate that in the other circuitry. I also mustn't forget to put a diode in there too. Okay, so now I'm just working on well, the next stages really. So I've mounted the DC to DC converter just here. It's got a couple of standoffs in there. There's there's mounts that are isolated from the ground anyway, but this will be the casing will be the DC negative anyway. So it doesn't actually matter. They'll tie together on the on this main board here. So I'm not worried about that part. So you've got the input voltage there, positive, uh, output positive that side, right? So negatives are both on the chassis side. We'll like to keep it risk-free for shorts. I'll wire that up shortly. I've got a diode already hanging out of the power supply so I don't forget. I knew I would do if I didn't do that. Almost did forget about it. I'm actually really tempted to just screw it in here like that. I don't like to block the cooling aspects of it but it shouldn't really get that hot anyway. It's not a big loading on it and so the chassis is bolted to the unit anyway. I've also, also for information I've also um, stuck this down as well so it's now attached to the battery box. Liquid electrical tape. It sticks quite well once it's actually in there. It's a bit hard to peel back off again but it does work. And really it's a bit of a bodge. But the only other way of mounting this is going to be on, on the casing on that top panel. I don't want to do that either. I don't really want to have wires training across if I don't need to and put it all in one spot. How hot is this going to get? I don't know. I mean, we can actually get a point where we can actually plug it in. Then we'll see if it powers up. And see what voltage we get too. But there's no load on it, so it might not like that very much. Usually they like to have a bit of a loading on there. DC volts. And I'm going to shove them across. So chuck that on. Nice, so you've got 80 volts out. Go down to 15.9. And up to 18, no, 21. So that's a nice range on it actually, it's good. So I need to set it for, if I set it so 18 there, stick it on that diode there, 17.7, it's probably a little bit high. Oh, this must be a shocky diode I put in here, not a silicon, okay. All right, so I've got a shocky diode, which is good as well, because that means it's not going to get too hot, because of the voltage drop across it, it's relatively small. So at least another power supply part's working. I thought that was a shock, it's FR302. God, I'm completely wrong. I was kind of in two minds with your shock, your silicon. The shock is obviously going to be a lower voltage drop, and silicon will be you know, a higher voltage drop and also dissipate more heat. And you also see I put a ferrite on these AC input as well, just trying to add a little bit of filtering. 
anything's going to help, you know, every little bit. I don't like to have too much AC noise. I've got all this audio circuitry here, so it may even be a problem with this particular power supply. I really hope not. I don't want to go to a linear supply and have to change it all what I've just done. So I think I'm at a point now where really I just need to basically mount this up. I've also done um, some thinking about the connections a bit more. So you can see here what I've got. I hope you can see. To draw it a bit small. Is it going to focus? Yes, yeah, kind of. So these are the actual terminals on those jumpers on that PCB. Right, in the order. So you've got the switch terminals on the end, and then we've got the what's it, 12 volt connections which are linked currently, and 19 volt connections which are linked currently. I'm going to leave those linked, and the middle pin there is the ground. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the 18 volt in from the battery pack. So there's the power supply and the battery pack going to link together, as I said before, off of that diode. So it goes power supply, diode, battery pack, into the switch connection. All right. Then the switch connection here will link back into itself over here on the 18 volt row, right? which will power the 18 volt circuitry on the board and also power that DC to DC converter which will then generate the 12 volts like so. So what I've really got to do is link those two pins together, those together, there and there, and insert that DC to DC converter in that circuitry there. Right. And also you've got the ground reference which I need to connect to as well. All right. So basically I've got a piece of um, header block here. I'm going to get, get a little circuit board, solder this to a board, and do all the links on the circuit board. And do all the wire connections onto that, so I can just plug it into the board and that will be done. Yeah, put it on solder two wires onto there at the same time, and then run that down to that PCB I'm going to make. Negative will go down to the PCB I'm going to make, and over to here as well. Um, onto negative. Now the, both negatives on this board here are actually connected together. There's a connection through the board. So I don't have to use both, I'm just do, like the negative going into the DC in there and that's a, it's basically used as reference for the switch mode really. I think it would be good because stuff, the original board here is based on having an AC signal going into it, so or AC power supply, so those bulk caps and stuff on there are going to be doing a good job smoothing it, so I've got the pack, you know, they should smooth out the rubbish from these two as well. So I think it would probably be okay, I'll have to check it for noise after. If I need to beef it up I'll strap a capacitor across the output or something. So the in from there PCB goes to there, and the out from there goes back into the 12 volt. So it's all pretty simple. So I only actually need sort of three wires going from here to the PCB, two wires from there, switches in and out. So I actually need is the ground going from there, or the zero volt from there, the terminal to jump onto there as well. So I actually need two wires from there going to that board, three wires from there going to the board. So it's five wires total. Power supply positive, battery pack positive. DC DC input on one side and DC DC input on the other side. So that's seven wires. Now have a think about it. Okay, so I've got the PCB and my header is already kind of placed in there. So how big it's going to be. That should fit in there. I'm going to solder it on and I can actually plug it in then. Now, yes, I do have it offset to one side because it means I've actually got some more space. Okay, so there's the header right there, which I need to plug this into. And I just want to make sure I can actually go in there before I commit too much. It's a bit close to that heatsink there though. I don't want it to touch that heatsink because that might be bad. Um, oh great, I just pulled the pin out. Let's put it back in again. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Anyway, not a big deal. So I'm just going to trim the other end off. I don't need that end anyway. Right, so I'll put it that way instead. Right. Okay, so that's in there. Right, so that'll fit a lot better. That's nicer. Right, so let's push it down. So there we go. That's definitely better. It's got a clearance now from each side. Yes, I'm going to touch anything. That's much better. So I'll do it that way around. That's okay. So I need to put some loops on this board um, in order to get these connections done. So I need to do a loop between these two pins. That's going to be closer than you can see. Right, so I need to do between those two pins there and those two pins there in order to create those bridges I need. And I also got to do another loop between um, 
those two and one of the switch pins. So it loops from one to there. I've got a whole bunch of, um, somewhere I've got a whole bunch of little offcuts. Little leads and stuff, so that's what I used to make those little loops. So I'll come back after I've done that. Okay, so as you can see I've taken the cover off the power supply yet again. And I've now attached the um, battery bank to it. Okay, I've put some sealant on there so if these were to come loose, they won't fall off into the power supply because that could be very, very bad. I'm not 100% happy with this solution. I wish it was a little bit different to what it is, but it's it's what's going to work. It's not wonderful. I prefer not to have done it this way. I prefer to actually mount it properly somewhere. But I didn't want to put any holes on top of the casing either. It's like the lesser of the evils, I suppose. That should be okay anyway. It's just it's just not wonderful to actually mount it like this. I and mean, you can see I've tried to keep as many of these holes available as possible as I can. So yeah, that's on there. This battery pack to link to the power supply positive after this diode. So it's got a link to where the diode is. And then that junction has to come down to the very end pin of this in order to um, make this connection for the switch. So it then passes through the switch, and then it's got these internal jump. Oh, it's got a jumpers built onto the board already to do these other functions here. And then I need to run a wire back from that side, or even from there, it could be from other one, either one really doesn't actually matter, back to the 12 volt board over here, which will then feed back to here again. So I've got, so if I just run four wires from this board up to here and then link them all up here. Okay, sorry about the noise, I'll turn the air conditioning back on again. It's too, too hot. So let's uh, start doing this. So I've got a black wire already through it through. This is going to be the ground connection, or the zero volt. You can, what you want to call it. So I'll solder this one. I'm going to solder two wires under here and then fit, run them back to the rest of the circuitry. And then I'll have to tidy this mess up afterwards because I've bridged the terminals out. There you go. These ones can be bridged because they're both for 12 volt anyway. So that's fine. Trim that off. So it's going to go, make sure I've got this right. Yep, okay, to the ground. So that is going to run from here. I'm getting shot, so we from there. I'm going to have some slack in it, so I can move it around. Allow for like laying this down, that sort of stuff. It's going somewhere. So I want to have enough slack on there, so I can, if I need to, I can lay this down and work on it. So there to there. Should be enough. Just go in there. So I'm going to solder it on the input side of that board, so that's a feedback to it. So that'll do. My head might get in the way and... Let's see we go. Um, wake up. Solder it on trying to go to sleep. Right. Yeah, shut the negative. And solder it in. I was going solder from the top, not the uh, bottom, and I might have to do it from the bottom. Which we'll see. Get to stay put would be great. This is messy, this is not good. Anyway, that's soldered. That would have flowed through to the bottom as well, so it should be fine. Let's check. Yeah, it's flowed through, that's okay. As expected. So what I'd have to do as well is run the negative from here onto the power supply as well, or I could run it onto the other end of that ball. Right, so shove those in that power supply connection to make sure we get on the negative, not the positive, because it's bad. So one from there, one from there. So we'll shove one in there. Right there, right. I have to make sure we don't clamp the cable on the um, clamp on the insulation. I have to make sure I only get the wire. So put those out slightly. Right, there we go. I always give them a tug to make sure they fall out. If they fall out, then it wasn't any good in the first place. So now I need to run the wire from here. If we go either to there or to there, I should really go to there, shouldn't I? Just trying to think about isolation, but I could do that with it so it runs like down and back up again to there. I think that'll be fairly tidy. I think that'll do the job. Go off there. That 
to run that onto here. That's messy, I need to fix that. God, it's pretty awful right now. Previous the solution. It'll work there. Now, what colour wires I'm going to use? I've got orange and I've got brown. I'm going to use for these. I think I'll use brown for the high voltage one, so the main supply. So I need to go from that diode up to that pack and over to here. So what I think I need to do is attach to this piece first. Okay, so I need the positive route, so that's going to be the switch side. Yes, that's the switch side here. So that one should feed into the switch. and just fits through the purple, which is fine. Just thinking about what I'm doing, making sure that goes to there, yep. Yeah. And I've got feedback from here, back to that ball. Right, all good. I'm not making any mistakes. Self evaluation is always a good thing to do. Always think about it. Question what you're doing sometimes, it's really um, helpful. Oh, it's gone to sleep. I have to set my sleep time a bit longer. Seems to go to sleep a bit too quick for my liking. Come on, over here. Flow onto the wire. So that one there has to follow the same length rule as that one and go onto that diode there. Then I'll take it off there. Let's go to the other one. So if I match that length for length, so here. Now, because I've got to clamp two wires together, is that going to be long enough? No, it should be. Yep. So I'm going to twist those together and stick them on the diode. Then I also have to heat shrink these on too. Wires resisting the solder a little bit. Not very helpful. Okay. So this needs to be shorter. Don't need sticking out that much. Hit drink, which will fit over that diode. That should do it, I think. On. Let it cool down before I put the heat shrink down, otherwise it will start shrinking before I get it over. And now I need to run this up to here as well, so let's get that length right. So 
that matches the negative. Okay, that should do it. Too bad. I think things are going okay. Slide this over. Shrink it down. So now I need to run two wires. To this board here, the in and the out. And then I think we're actually really close to being done. I'll have to clean this board up again afterwards, make sure there's no bridges on it and that sort of stuff. So now I need another brown wire. I've had these cables for years. Years and years. One day I'm going to run out and I'm going to really be a bit unhappy about it because they're really quite nice cables. Anyway. So now I need the other end of that, which is going to be from switch side or from the other side. I can't go here, just to make it clearer what it's actually doing. I have to make some notes properly and actually put it somewhere. Let's do it. Try to run it down the trace as well so the um, reinforces it so it's got a higher current can capacity. Just a little bit. It's only a small detail but could help. So that goes back to the in. So that's got the same wire length as the black one. So let's pull it down. So now this should be all right. It'd be nice to get this project done. Been mean to do this for ages. Ever since I got it. Now I'm trying to get into here again. I'm trying to get so you can see what I'm doing, but it's not easy. Through the hole. Here's the hole. So that's on the inside, so that's all done. Right. That's all good so far. Now I've got to do the out from there. Oh, I'm that shot again. So I've got to do the out from there. Okay, which I'm going to use the orange wire for. I like this wire because it just fits through the holes in the perf ball, you have to sort of wiggle a little bit and it goes through. So it's pretty much perfect what I want. So the bigger size you can get through the ball. Okay. 
and get to flowed nicely. It's not the best soldering on here, I'm afraid. I'll have to go around and clean up, I think. That'll do. Just check any bridges before we forget about it. Which between the positive and negative, that'd be quite bad. Right. Looking alright. I can live with it. What do you reckon? Good enough. If it's focused on it, it'd be great. I'll do the same thing again, run it down to the same length. Run it down to there. that onto the output one. Just like that. Nice. Now I'm all easy. Cool. So in theory that should now work. What do you reckon? Should we try powering it up and see if it goes bang? Before I hook it up to the unit, I'll power it up in itself here and um, verify we've got the correct voltages in the correct places. Not anything horrible to go wrong there. Power is on, power supply is powered up. You can see the green LED just down there. Right, let's check across the battery pack side of things, which is left to there, I think. 14 volts here, that's what I saw. 14, yep, so I was trying to do it, but obviously the charge controller is not sensing batteries, so that's fine. Right, let's just check on this thing here now. Right, so let's uh, stick a probe in a negative, which is that one. And probe all the pins. Right. Um, of course there's no link, is there? So we'll, we'll actually power up here. 17 volts there, 17.1 just there, that's fine. So if I stick a link between those two, then I'll get power. Um, I need a link. Okay, so we've got a little piece of wire here. Let's plug it into this ball to simulate the switch. Hope nothing goes bang. All right, let's try it again. Negative one in, that's the negative there. Let's probe this ball first, what's going on? 12 volts coming out, it's looking promising. So let's check on here again. If you drop in the probe, it'd be helpful. Right. So yeah, we've got 16.9 volts now, it's got a bit of load on it, it's a bit different. It's dropped very slightly. Yeah. So 12.1, there. It's okay, I think I need to allow for voltage dropping out. I can tweak that setting there, I can reach it. So that's looking promising, it looks like it's right. We've got the voltage on the pins we should have. So I think I can actually plug that in now and be safe about plugging that in without anything going bang. Or at least that's the hope. Oh, I'm going to take the jumper pin out too, otherwise it won't go on. Oh, what? Yeah, put that out. So that should go. What I need to do is cable tie those right there, I think. Let's do that now. Yeah. I'll do the rest after, as I'm sure it's okay. I'll see what I'm doing. Make sure I'm lined up. Okay, that's in. Alright, that's in place. So this should now power up the unit. I'll check the batteries afterwards. First thing I'm going to do is make sure it powers up. Power it up. Turn the switch on. Hey, look at that. Let's 
Seems to be picking up a bit of noise though. See something there, I don't know, because I haven't got my microphone in at all. No, it's just random stuff. Right, so that's at least working. So I'm confident this is okay, so what I'll do is I'll cable tie this as well. Get the near done. Try and keep it nice and tidy. Those I probably want to do something with, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. Maybe I can put a little bracket on that screw or something that comes off and I'll tie it out. I don't like to leave things dangling like this. So that in a case there, this is a little concerning. So with that lined up to, to put the screws back in, you can see that in a case there is really close to that ball. Right there. It should be okay, but I'm a little nervous about that. It's not going to touch it unless it kind of sags a bit. I might put, put some kind of um, Right, put something there to hold it away. I'm not expecting to have to unplug it again, so I might just put some sealant in there to hold it in place, a bit of hot glue or something, just to stabilise it, so it definitely won't fall over. Let's put some screws back in here. Yeah, that's not that one. I just want a normal screw. Here we're a nice normal screw. Well, some people like a normal screw. Some people like abnormal screws. That might go there. Right, that'll do for now. Just to stabilise it, it's not going to fall over. So we'll go, let's put these batteries in. And then we'll do some tests on those as well. And once those batteries are in, I'll also set this power supply voltage. So negative is that way. Okay, so the battery's in. Now the thing I can do as well is wrap a cable tie around this to hold it all in. So if, it, if there's any vibration, it shouldn't pop the batteries out I and mean, then it should be basically touching the case anyway, so the case is going to be right above it. So it shouldn't actually be an issue. Let's re-measure the voltages. Because that'll then be charged when the battery's up. I want about 17.1, 7.2 volts. I think about 4.3 volts across each cell. So that's 16.6. Uh, is that right? No, 17.2. Is like the minimum I need to get all four batteries charged to 4.3 volts. Power supply is pulsing. So the green light's pulsing. That's interesting. What's going on there? So it's shutting down, and starting up again. Is it the current from charging the batteries? Is it too much for it? It's possible. I'll take one of the batteries out. Turn on again. So now it's fine. Hmm. It seems that trying to charge the batteries is too much for it. Well, that's a bit inconvenient. Put the battery back in. Pulsing again. It's a little bit concerning, actually. It's not meant to be doing that. Also, it's a bit too much current for it, so I'm going to pop it out, it's okay. Let me get my current meter out and see what it's doing. Oh, I've got this little ammeter here, so you want uh, 2 amp scale, that should be enough. You want DC, zero it. And let's see what current we've got going through here. If you want it down, it stabilises it. What voltage is that? It can run at a low voltage. Hmm, 15.8. Okay. I guess it's drawing less current. And that's creeping up at least. Okay, so we'll pop one of those batteries out. What's the voltage right now? 16.7. Okay, let's see what current we're getting now. Overload. Oh, really? Re zero it. And make it DC. Re zero. Six amps. No wonder it's shutting down. <laughs> 
bloody hell. Okay, that's a bit more than I was expecting. I think I could see smoke then. I've shut the power off. Something's getting too hot. That's too much current for it. Six amps. I wasn't expecting that much current. Yeah, something definitely smoked then. I could see smoke. It's probably overloading the transformer. So we won't carry on with that. What is the voltage that's on these batteries right now anyway? So look. Three point six. Well, I have to look at some solution for that. That could be horribly wrong. Okay, so I play around this a little bit more. Obviously, I can't have six amps current draw potentially. Well, I've got flat batteries in here. That is just asking for trouble. It will end up blowing up the power supply. So I thought, right, let's just look at a simple way of resolving this situation. I need to lower the charging current. This charge current, I need to limit. I don't want to limit that at all. Right, I want this charge current basically be and voltage to be as high as I can. So the unit can run off the batteries for as long as possible. So I thought, right, if I want to limit the current, I'm going to chuck a resistor in series. So what I've actually done is I've put in a 4.7 ohm resistor right here, 5 watt resistor. And across that I've got a shocky diode. Right, the reason I've got that is so that I can limit the charge current but, but allow a mat higher uh, discharge current and higher discharge voltage. Okay. If I just had the resistor alone, then the voltage would be way too low, it drops down a lot, um, as you would expect, right? So I was getting like, I think I was getting about 11.8 volts or something, just using that resistor off these batteries. You can see I've got it charging at the moment, right? 384 milliamps is what it's currently doing. I can probably tweak the voltage a little bit and bring it up slightly more. Let's just do that now. And that will increase the charge current very slightly. I'll show you what happens though when I'm working on this. Get that in there. This is a convenient earth point here, which is why I'm using that. So, there's the charging voltage, 17.06. That's the voltage on the battery side, 15. I'm dropping about you know, 2 volts across that resistor. All right. Um, at 380 milliamps. What's that in watts? I don't know. Couple of watts in it, it's like I can't really do it in head right now, but it's not much, all right. So it's not putting much stress on it. There's marginal heat, there's a little bit of heat, but it's not too bad. It's not like it's getting hot really quickly, it's been on for a few minutes now. And it's you no, know, it's this is on to get hot, and it's fine, it's getting warm. But um, what is that? That sounds what's so what's two volts across zero that times two volts. So if I call that 400, that's about 800, so 0.8 watts is what's basically being dissipated across this resistor. It's a 5 watt resistor, it's fine. Obviously when the batteries are more discharged it will be a higher, um, higher uh, level. That's my screen over here. So I'm just going to tweak this voltage, because what I also want to do is to have it so as it's charging up the, um, the current drops, which is a nice way of doing it, but I also want to have a decent charging voltage so if I do 17.3 volts right that should be allowing for a drop off across here as well you see the current's going up a little bit 0.9 watts now something like that across there maybe one watt right so again still way within the capacity of the of the resistor now if I turn off the charging circuitry so I turn the power supply off so there's no, no longer charging and um, I'm now turning it on instead that's a discharge current, and how much current it will be will depend a lot on um, what LEDs are on display and that sort of stuff. So I'm just pushing buttons on the front to see if I can trigger a different display. So it's not changeable much even with some LEDs on display. But, you know, if it's, um, let's plug the microphone in and try to actually trigger it and make it do something, and we'll see what the current goes up to driving those LEDs. Bear in mind, we have batteries right now. So there we go, running LEDs, that's about an amp. Okay, so that's how much current it needs to actually run the unit. And if I check the um, diode side there, there we go, so it's 14 volts that side, 14.6 that side, so I'm losing 0.6 of a volt or so. And it's supposed to be shocky, so I'm surprised I'm losing that much actually, but it's still manageable. And obviously there's the 12 volt power supply rail right there. Okay, 
So 12 volt is going to be stable down to about 12.6. And then it'll start dropping off. So, but that's okay, they can drop off because it's got a bigger tolerance for the drop off than it compared to the other rail. If I'm rightly. It's my notes. I could be getting there backwards. Let me check. Yeah, so it can drop down to 7.6 volts before it stops working. Whereas the 18 volt rail can only drop down to 11.4. So that's okay. If that's dropping down to 11.4, that means the this rail here be about 10.2 or something like that. So it's still way high. So this is a bit of one that limits it, this one here. But that's fine. That's working fine and it's all running and it's off the battery pack and it's managing it just fine. So let's turn it back off. And now because I'm obviously limiting the current now um, to you know half an amp or so on this, obviously it'll be slightly higher than more discharge batteries are. But it won't be much higher. If it was an amp, it'd be okay. So say if I had discharging at one amp, you know, doubled the current, it'd be turned on, that'd still only be about two amps draw, which is within the capacity of that power supply. So I don't want it to stress the power supply either. So this method will work, so you can see the parts there. Okay, so I'm gonna tie this up, mount these in here somehow so it's nice and tidy. And um, make sure it's not gonna get damaged and that sort of stuff. I don't want to have it hanging off the circuit board, this is no good. So I'll do something with that in a minute and tidy that up, maybe run a little wire down or put it in the middle of that wire or something like that. Probably won't actually spice it in the middle of that wire. That way it's stress relief and that sort of stuff. And that will do the job, that will work fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's what I'm going to do. That little change there allows for the current restriction, limits the current on those batteries so it can be charged from flat, still work to a decent voltage and that sort of stuff too. So I'm happy with that. Nearly done. Also, I should mention that if, the, um, if you're interested in this meter, it's a good little meter, nice and compact, as you can see, fits in the hand easy. And it does down to two amps, all right? AC and DC, really handy little meter. I've done a review on this previously um, when I first got it, you haven't actually seen me use it at all in any videos. But I have you been using it, in the, you know, myself, just not on video until now. So if you're interested in this, I've done a review on it. So do a search for the UT210E on my channel. There will be a review video for this. I might even link it down below for me if I'm able to do it. And it's, um, I think I've got some Banggood. Yeah, Banggood sent this to me. Um, so follow the links to my Banggood page, which are even in the description of this video, definitely and do a search for this, follow that Banggood link and that gives me an affiliate credit on my account if you buy one of these things or something else so I thought I'd mention that always a chance to chill always have to chill okay so I've now got everything together and working so obviously there's a battery pack there I've, you see I've got a cable tie around it to hold it all together attach this, it's not too bad there actually it's actually okay I've done the um, resistor and a diode, you can just see it inside there attached on the back of the block, so there's a resistor which is cable tied and the diode that's here, strapped across the resistor there and you can see I've got the wires going to it and hitch ringed on you can see it's cable tied and I've also used some of this um, thermal adhesive as well it's a bit old, it's supposed to have gone off in 2016 but it still works so I thought I'd use that to heat sink and attach that 5 watt resistor to the um, casing of the uh, power supply. That way it's heat sinking it and um, helping to secure it as well. So that's all done. I've stuck um, so obviously ferrites on, on these as well, these wires just to help those possibly reduce any noise that may be there. I haven't checked um, the supply lines or anything ripple yet. I should really do that. This is currently on running. I've got the green light running on there. You can just see the green light there. And it's working fine. So that resistor and diode combination works really well for the charge rate on this. I've increased the voltage to um, 17.4 volts because of the voltage drop on this resistor anyway it will help to cushion that a little bit and take some of that harshness out of the charging circuitry and don't forget the original circuitry is supposed to run 18 volts and that side of it is all you know still well within what it's expecting so on the battery charging let's see Charging side there, if I can get the, oh, the probe to touch, see, there you go. Oh, 17.3 is slightly lower. 16.2, so it's gradually coming up, which is exactly what I'd expect to happen. So that's what, 1.1 volts across 4.7 ohms. What's that, 250 milliamps or so would be running through that resistor. So the, the current's also dropping down as well. 
So I'm actually tempted to increase that voltage some more because um, say that resistor is going to protect those from excessive current and charge anyone. Charge circuitry, protection circuitry on there will cut the charging circuitry off anyway. But I, th I think it's probably capable of going to 18 volts now. And the only reason I had that voltage set before to that lower level was to make sure I don't overcharge the batteries. But that's what the protection circuit is there for. And obviously, the higher the voltage, the faster it will charge. And it's got plenty of capacity to handle more current, so it can it can handle twice as much as it's actually currently doing. Um, it's just whether or not I risk overcharging these batteries. You know, what's going to happen if I leave it sitting on there overnight, for example? So I want to be a bit more careful about how I configure it. So it's got. I'm tempted to increase it some more. Right now, as you see, that battery voltage is 16.4 volts. So what's that? That's uh, 4.1 volts per cell. Is that right? Yeah, 4.1 volts per cell, so it's almost charged. And this has been on now for a couple of hours. Probably two or three hours now it's been charging. So it's pretty slow charging, um, but that's fine. That's I don't, It's not like I need to use it often and it has to be charged up rapidly and that sort of stuff. It's fine. Having a long charge, if it takes six hours, it's... Or, you know, it's all right, it doesn't matter. Eight hours, you know, even you know, charge it overnight and use it the following day, kind of thing. That'd be fine. I can increase the current, I just want to see what happens after it's settled down a bit more. I've already put some of that rubber stuff on the um, terminals on the, on the main side there because it's too easy to touch that, so that worries me a bit. So, I've covered that in that um, PVC electrical tape stuff, that liquid electrical tape. I might stick another layer on there yet. I've also put some down in there as well on the edge to try and stabilise that ball so it doesn't rock around quite so much and make sure something between it and the casing so that should be fine now as well I'm comfortable with that it also means it won't fall out if it gets knocked because it will hold it in place so that project is basically done I just want to do some voltage measurements and actually check ripples and stuff like that in case these smoothing caps aren't adequate you know I could always strap a cap across the power supply or across here I could very easily do that just to boost up a bit more. You know, it, it could be very easy to do that. But the batteries themselves should help smooth out this power supply. But this rail, 12 volt rail here, might need some checking. So, anyway, I'm gonna I'll do that afterwards. I've got some other stuff I need to do right now. It's like you know, 25 past nine at night almost. Okay, so as you can see, the unit is back together. Sorry about the lighting. There's, there's currently a power outage, so my face is gonna be a bit dim. So I can't do much about that right now. And um, you can see, no power, not plugged in. Turn it on. One battery pack. So as you can see, it's working just fine. I did do some work on the microphone. The microphone had some issues. I think I've fixed that now. And um, like, I put it too loud. I can't whistle. Anyway, yeah, it works. It works okay. So the microphone had problems with um, picking up mains hum, like 50 hertz hum in my case, 50 hertz in my country, which is right here. So the big spike down there. Um, no, it's not showing this one. I thought I'd saved it. I pulled the microphone apart and I made put a new wire on the actual insert on here. So it's unplugged. I'll show you what I mean. So it's got one screw that you take out, and that that's a little circuit board inside there, and that whole assembly is pulled out with that connector, and you just got a wire which runs to the actual mic element on the tip, and um, there's a little hole through the centre of that, and the, and the original wire had joins in it, which I think is probably from the factory, just the way they manufacture it. It was heat shrinked and everything; it looked fine, but but I noticed the board, the way it's made, has got some resistors. I should actually bloody put it apart and show you, shouldn't I? Actually, I'll do that. Let's put it apart and show you. It had resistors in there, which are right on the edge of the board. And I've got to get that out. Um, there we go. All right, so it's got right there resistors on the edge of the board, and I think was it these ones here? There, this one's there. All right, I think they actually touched the ca the casing when the thing's in the unit. All right, let's try and get a close on it. Put it by focus, got a manual focus set up. So, what I've actually done, I've got some of my liquid electrical take and I've just put it on the sides on the edge of the board and on those resistors to try and make sure that they're not shorting out onto the casing. I've put a new wire on as well, so um, single piece wire, it's obviously a bit longer, but and the board is also covered in flux. So, I don't think they would have done that from the factory. 
I don't know, I think maybe someone's been trying to fix it in the past and they just left it covered in flux, I'm not sure. Anyway, so I cleaned all the flux off as well, just gave it a clean up. These are adjusted, but I'm not quite sure what the adjustments are for, or um, any, any, you know, how much that matters. But I'm not look, you know, looking for super precision anyway, I just wanted it not to hum anymore. So I've done all that and it's, that's fixed the problem, so I put a new wire on to tidy it up, because the original wire was also really short, I could barely get the thing out. So I thought I'd just, just give the microphone insert uh, an overhaul and now it's working absolutely fine as you saw. So that's brilliant. This is uh, serial number 6174 for reference as well. Now these actually have a, like a, a fake screw here, it doesn't actually screw into anything but there's like a screw head here normally. And when I was originally trying to pull it apart I actually started with that screw thinking I could get this end off. But it turns out it's just glued in, and now I don't know where I'm today. It's gone. I don't know where that screw's gone, but it's a fake screw head. So anyway, um, I probably should put something in there to seal that up again. But anyway, that's what the inside of the mic looks like, and it's just a. I spent a little while on that. I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so, maybe half an hour fixing that up. Um, the mic insert was also loose, um, so I had to push that out, solder the wire onto the back of that insert. And um, it put some new adhesive on and secure it back in there again. Just a little bit, just, it just sits around the outside. It's actually a loose fit, it will slide in and out of that barrel there. I'll just put just a little bit of this to hold it. I, I want to be able to get it back out again later on if I need to. But right now it's it's all fine. I mean, the glue I use is that liquid electrical tape because it's you can pick it off again, it's quite soft, so you can actually get it back out if you really need to. But it holds it well enough unless you're trying to get it out, it's quite good. Anyway, show the back in there. So yeah, I'm happy with that. It all works. Battery powered, lot of lithiums. So I don't know how long the battery's going to last. I mean, in theory, it should last about two hours or so. In theory. There's some works going outside the house. This is, this is picking them up. That's the truck. Yeah, so noise it isn't here right now. It's done. I'm happy with that. One more project completed, and now obviously the best bit is that now it uh, it runs at 240 volts, not 120. I need to remark the back actually. It's just put that out of there. And let's mark the back for 240 volts, so I know in case I forget forget I've actually done it. The lighting's awful right now. Sorry about that. 240 volt. Although that power supply will actually run 100 volts up to 240, but it shouldn't matter. I'm 240 volt, never done anything, do anything else. So. Um, I've actually ordered some more feet. Like I've got these feet on the bottom here, which are quite chunky. See? Um, I need the same on the back. There used to be ones on the back. They, they came with them on the back as well. You can probably just see the little squares on the corners. So if you stand on its end, it's not standing on all the connectors and stuff like that. Because when you've got the battery back in there, you may want to stand it up like that. Okay, now right now it's just rocking all the fittings and buttons and stuff on the back. So once I get some feet, I ordered them, um, then I will stand up off the bench properly and, and be nice then. So then you can actually just stand it on something end on and I still use it. Now obviously I've got this cable here which you normally use with it, plug that into it and um, put the mic on into that cable. One project completed. Thanks for watching. I hope that you subscribe, click on the bell icon to make sure you get notifications so you don't miss out on my videos. Very important that if you, if you don't click on that, you won't, you may not see my videos as I post them, and you don't, you don't get the opportunity to see what I'm working on at the moment. So uh, make sure you do that. Click on that bell icon. Share the video too if you know people tuning to car audio or anything audio related that might be interested in RTAs, or they have one of these, or someone that may be wanting to get one of these things. Share this video to them because they they probably find it interesting and, and maybe even want to upgrade their unit if they've already got one or they get or they get one that doesn't have the battery packs in it. Um, this would be very useful for some people, I'm sure. There's quite a few of these things out there. Most of them will probably have bad battery packs by now because these are quite old units, although they'll still work perfectly well. The battery packs will be failing and they'll need renewing or replacing, and might as well go to the latest technology and upgrade to things and give you some flexibility. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Catch you later. And uh, tell your friends. Share it on social media, that kind of thing. Now this one here is supposed to be a step up, or oh sorry, a boot, uh, step up, 
a boost. No, get it right. This is supposed to be a um, buck converter. 